So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Tonight I want to talk about have faith in love. You know, uh, have faith in love. Mark 11, 22 says, have faith in God, but God is love. And so we can interchange those two words, faith and love. Faith and love. And so we have faith in God, but we can have faith in love. And I have a passage that, uh, a couple of verses that I want Sherry to read to us from the, trend, um, the Passion Translation. And this is about, it says, trust in love. Okay, Sherry? Amen. No, just leave it on Gary. It says in verse 16 of 1 John chapter 4, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God and God lives through them. Verse 17, by living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Okay, there's three words that I want to focus on today, and that's faith, fear, and love. We can have our faith, in fear, we believe uh, said something dreadful is going to happen. I call that faith in fear. Uh, it's really doubt and unbelief. So we can have our whole perspective um, based on fear, or we can have it based on love. Uh, both these are opposites because love drives out fear, not just normal love, but perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear. And so these two things, fear and perfect love, or it's divine love, God's love. And what we want to talk about today is increasing in love because we want to move it all the way to perfect love. And this verse that Sherry just read said we can trust in love and we can, we can experience a relationship with God in which our love grows. So as long as we're in God, we can grow in love and it will cause us to be fearless. Uh, so these are, these are really two opposites, faith, and I'm not faith, but I'm talking about fear versus love. And let's just think about love for a moment. And, and we start with some circle of love. Uh, and it may, your circle of love may be large or it may be small. It may be static or it may be growing. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to think about that. It is, and that's the people that you love. That's your family and friends and uh, uh, colleagues and acquaintances and the people you reach out to. That's your circle of love. Now, what we want to do is put our faith in love or trust in love, which is trusting in God. And we want to grow our circle of love. But outside there are limits, see, on how much we love. And it's kind of like a wall and, and we want to take those limits down. And that's what perfect love does. It, it takes out those, uh, mm. that wall, that circle of love, uh, because on the outside is fear. Uh, outside of that circle of love is fear because they're opposites. But but the extreme then is if we grow in perfect love, to love all the way that it's complete, uh, it's perfect, then that wall is broken down and, mm -hmm. and we have no limitations on us. And so we're always at the point that we need to uh, see where our limits are and stretch out, stretch out more territory. Uh, I believe that the Lord wants all of us uh, to reach into new territories and and influence people's lives and have impact on their lives. So these are some of the things that we're, we're going to be talking about tonight. Now, Sherry read from 1 John 4, and, and 1 John 4 uh, has several verses about love and perfect love. And where does perfect love come from? Well, it, it comes from being in God, mm -hmm. but God we can't see. 
it comes from loving people, loving one another. That's where perfect love mm, comes from. It's good, it's good. First John 2 says it also comes from us following the word. So as we're following the word and loving uh, other people, now we can say, oh, I, I love God. I love God. But we have to express that in our love to other people. And as we love other people, then our circle of love increases. And the way that we get perfect love is to increase our circle of love. That's by the influence and reaching out to other people. And I want to give you some examples. When uh, Sherry and I were a young married couple, we were very involved in our uh, church congregation. And, and through time, uh, we thought we loved people. And, and that's the way everybody is. You, you love. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know you have love. You have God in your heart. And you know that you love. But how big is your circle of love? And that's the people that you impact and influence uh, in the area of love. That's your circle of love. And what we found is when we began to reach out, and we first reached, uh, reached out into uh, low-income areas, and we started mm -hmm. uh, ministering to children and uh, just telling them about Jesus, leading them to Jesus. And then their parents came, and they said, well, teach us too. So there was, there was a large community, and uh, it was a low-income area, and we taught the children. We taught the uh, parents, and, and we led all of them, all of the children to the, to the Lord, and we led all of the parents to the Lord. We taught them the Word, okay? And we gave them all Bibles. And we bought them all Bibles. And, and uh, one day, there was a little girl in my lap. And she was a little black girl, and she reached up on my face and and patted me, patted my face, and said, "Where did your black go?" Because she was only familiar with black people, and, and all her friends were black, and she hadn't seen a white man, and she thought uh, that when I was young I was black, but sometime I, I, I it, washed up, away. It, it washed away. Uh, and, and so that's we went into an area where they weren't familiar with people like us, and. We certainly weren't familiar with people like them either, and we thought we loved, but when we went into that area, we began to uh, increase our circle of love, yeah. and we began found out love. we found out that we didn't really love. We just loved the people in our small circle to begin with, the people that looked like us and talked like us and agreed with us, lived in houses like us and drove cars, cars like, like us. us. But over time, as we reached out to other people, we began to reach out to people that weren't like us. They didn't look like us. They didn't smell like us. They didn't talk like us. And they uh, ate out of uh, dumpsters mm -hmm. and they uh, they panhandled and they were homeless. And, and they, they had were, no vehicles. They were alcoholics and, uh, and drug addicts. And we began to increase our circle. And that's when we found out what true love was, uh, that, yeah. that you have to love unlovely people and, and people that are not like you. And that uh, the circle began to to increase. Now, uh, 1 John 4 says, uh, basically, you have to practice love. You have to love other people. Now, people say that um, practice makes perfect, but really, what makes perfect is perfect practice, practice and makes, so you have to be yeah. practicing perfectly, uh, or in other words, following the Lord, and he'll show you how to love. Not only will he show you, but he'll put love in your heart yeah, by the Holy yeah. Spirit. See, Romans 5 talks about, and verse 5 says that the Holy Spirit puts love in your heart. Now, I want to commend all of you because you have uh, shown love to us. You've yes. come here, and this is a weird place to be here with Fred and Cherry, and, and, uh, but you've, you've been open, and you've shown us love, and, and we appreciate that. And, and by your coming here and being a part of this, that your love circle has grown. And that's what God wants for all of us to do is to grow in love. And, but do it in perfect uh, alignment and agreement with the Lord. And we do that by the Holy Spirit. And so then our love circle grows and we perfect love. Now, everybody, see, starts with an area where they love people. And they love the people around them. They love the people that are like them. But then as you begin to practice loving other people, loving people that are not so lovely uh, as the people around you, then your love circle begins to grow, and that's how you perfect love. And, and so when you perfect love, 
then you drive out fear. Now, so there's these two things that I'm talking about now, and they're, they're faith, or they're love and fear. Now, both love and fear, so we either have uh, fear or love uh, developing our perspective on everything. So if we're uh, driven by love, by fear, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it will limit us and limit what we do. <clears throat> and it, it just is, there's a limitation there. It's like a wall. Yeah, I have a testimony. Okay. I have a testimony when, when Brother Fred is talking about um, basing your perspective on fear. Because there was a time when our three children were, were very small. Uh, we had three children under the age of three and a half. And so they were very close together. And they all had different issues. And of course, we've told you about Amy Elizabeth and her, her issue of no immunity system. But we also had an issue with Jason. We had an issue with Travis and our, our two sons. And, and I was, I woke up every morning with a perspective of fear. What was going to come next? What was going to uh, become of our three children? Uh, we had waited so long uh, before we ever had, we received Jason uh, when we had been married 12 years. And I mean, Elizabeth came along uh, when we had been married 14 years. And, and so, and then Travis a year later. And so, I had a fear every single day of my life of something happening to my three children that we had so much wanted for so many years. And, and so I woke up with that perspective of fear, fear of what was going to happen to them, fear that we weren't going to uh, be able to, to pay our bills. And I had just fear upon fear upon fear. And it says that fear has torment. And I was tormented. I was tormented because I had put um, my trust in, in fear and not in God's love. And so that changed. That changed uh, when we began to get into the word of God. We began to study the word of God and the, the Holy Spirit came upon me and baptized me in the Holy Ghost and fire. And, and there was just a, the Lord just infused me, if you will. I had a love infusion uh, into, into my heart and I was able to, uh, to believe the Lord and trust in the Lord and trust in, in love rather than uh, always having a perspective of, of fear. Okay, so both of these terms, <clears throat> fear and love, are self-fulfilling. Uh, mm -hmm. Job, see, was very fearful about his children. Right. And he lost all of his children, lost all of his wealth. And then I believe it's Job chapter 3, verse 25. He said, the thing that I greatly he feared, feared came, come up, upon me. came upon me. Uh, the, and, and literally, that verse means the fear I fear comes to me. The fear wow. I fear. I fear a fear, and it comes. Now, that's literally the wow. word. I fear a fear, and it comes. So mm. it's self-fulfilling. Mm. It's mm. a self-fulfilling mm. prophecy. If I'm fearful, then that's the thing that happens. And I'm, I'm afraid that... Uh, uh, dreadful things will happen. I, and so I'm in doubt and unbelief if I am operating in fear or out of fear. The fear I fear comes upon me. That's a terrible yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. And, and people need to be free from that. And so if they put their trust in fear, then that's going to be self-fulfilling that the fearful and dreadful things come upon them. Mm -hmm. But if you put your faith in love and you trust love and love is God and God is love. And so if you're trusting love, then love does not fail. Hallelujah. That's first Corinthians 13. Love does not, not fail. fail. And so if you put your trust in love, 
it will not fail. You will be victorious. Hallelujah. Now, it'll cause you, if you really uh, trust in love, it's going to give you courage. Uh-oh. Oh, it's going to give, give you courage to expand your circle of love. love. And you begin Amen. to grow in love and begin to touch other people. I like I said, uh, we thought we loved people. We right. had a pretty small circle of love until we began to reach out into the community and touch the lives of people. And then later we uh, spent the years in jails and prisons t uh, teaching them and recovery homes and, recovery homes and ministering uh, to them. And then we went uh, internationally, started uh, going into different countries. And we began to uh, see people that didn't look like us and didn't talk like us, didn't even have the same language. But we but God put a love inside of us. That's right. And we could reach out and we had to reach out. It was it was just the propelling. We were propelled and, and, and moved forward by the love of God that was in us. We had to reach out and, and to impact people's lives. Now, we thought everything was good as long as we had that little love circle. And, and uh, we'd go mm -hmm. and see our friends and have time with our friends and go to the church services and then we'd have fellowship and we had that little circle it was just a little circle and and we thought everything was okay well we didn't know that that beyond that it, it was a fearful world but when we began to reach out into that world and, and part of the reason that we did that was uh of the teaching of the word of God. We really got into the word of God, studying the word of God, and we knew we needed to move out and, and not just be satisfied with our little circle of love, but we had to reach out into the community. God invested in us, and we needed to, to pour out that investment. God wanted to work through us like he wants to work through each of you. He has invested uh, his word and his spirit inside of you and the truth inside of you and, and he wants to work through you out into uh community and in, into the community and to other people okay so well, i have another testimony all right here comes, yeah. here comes. <laughs> well one thing that 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 helped me to grow and to in, enlarge my circle of love uh was that i would do puppet shows in george and joy i uh, will relate to this because i would take my puppets um, down to family housing uh, at the for the University of Georgia, and I would set up my little tents and tables, and and we would take snacks for the children, and and we would do our puppet shows uh, down there. And there were children from from all different countries uh, that would that would come, and some of them may not have understood English, but they understood the puppets and what the puppets were doing. And uh, and we would, would teach about Jesus and they would have their little snacks and cookies and 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 little bitty drinks in those little bitty boxes and and uh and that that helped me to come out of of, of fear and into love. And it also helped me expand my my circle of love. Okay, good. <laughs> Sherry's fitting right in here. Thank you. She catches it. That's good. <laughs> you know, one of the things that has helped us is, of course, I mentioned the, about the Word of God, about how it has, uh, that we really got into the Word of God. And we saw from that we had to move mm -hmm. out and we had to do other things uh, and, and expand our horizon. And, and that's what I encourage each of you to do. But another thing that helped me uh, and helped us to, to expand our horizon and, and impact uh, was that we have people who challenge us. There's uh, yeah, friends yeah. around us uh, that, uh, uh, that feed uh, children at the dump uh, in other mm -hmm. worlds and mm -hmm. in other countries, I mean, and uh, people that uh, go uh, every week to uh, the thousands of homeless people on Skid Row in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. and uh, go to the church on the in the park where it's homeless people mm -hmm. and, Echo Park, mm -hmm. and and they evangelize in uh, uh, in colleges where they're leading people to the Lord. And so mm -hmm. these kinds of people encourage me. And uh, Doug Roberts, uh, whom some of you have met, uh, 
I mean, he travels all over the world and, and he uh, has been in some really, really strange situations. Mm -hmm. And Sherry and I have been in some strange situations and we've gone into jails and prisons in other countries. And you know, uh, prisons in other countries are not like uh, yeah. the one here in the United States. And I had, uh, I took my uh, son-in-law with me one day and he uh, went into a prison uh, in Honduras. And the thing about this particular prison, they had just killed 50 men in a revolt uh, inside the prison. And the, it's so, uh, so bad in that prison that the, so, that the guards don't go in the prison. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the inmates, they run the prison and the guards just stand on the outside and make sure that uh, they don't get out. Uh, yeah. But, but <laughs> my, my son-in-law and some other men, they went in there to minister to those people. I mean, that's, that takes courage. And so what I'm leading to then is courage. courage. If you have uh, your faith in love, you will have courage to spread the love. Ooh. Glory to God. Let me say that again. Yes, I think, amen. I think it's pretty good. Say it, say it, say it. If you have faith in love, you will have the courage to spread the love. I mean, and and amen. so you will expand your uh, wall and your circle of love. You'll you'll expand it. And, and the basic idea, you have to love people in order to perfect love. So you have to practice mm. love. Now, if I just sit in, in my room, I, I don't really practice love. And I can put on my worship uh, uh, garments. music, <laughs> worship uh, garments and, and praise the Lord and all. But I, I'm not practicing love uh, of loving other people. And that's what First uh, John 4 talks about that in order for us to perfect our love, uh, we have to practice and, and it's perfect practice. And so being led by the spirit of God on loving people and how to love, uh, love people. Well, we have to come out of our comfort zone. See, this is the comfort and, and zone. Yeah, the, the, this is our little circle right here. And we, we feel good there. We feel comfortable there. Everybody uh, we know there. And, uh, but it takes courage to expand your, your love circle. And, and reach out to other people. And if we were just uh, talking about ourselves, we just sit here in our house, uh, then we could think everything was all right. But, but we want people around us who will challenge us, yes. uh, to challenge us to reach out to other people. And uh, uh, like, like I said a moment ago, Doug Roberts gives us oversight but the amount of travel he does each right. year and they're all over the world, uh, uh, Mongolia, China, and Thailand, and uh, throughout and Latin Germany. America, and mm -hmm. Germany, and uh, throughout Europe, and, and Africa, throughout Africa. And uh, uh, so he's just one, but we have so many friends that are doing so many things, and it, it challenges us. Yeah. But they're also some scriptures uh, that, that challenge our thinking. Mm -hmm. And I want us to think about uh, 1 John 3, 8. For example, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And, yeah. and what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to do what Jesus did. If you believe in me, you'll do what I did. Well, what he did was to destroy the works of the devil. Now, you, wanna, you might want to get a that's George right there. That's George. Or get a hatchet and go around and, and uh, <laughs> knocking down the walls and things. But I believe what he's talking about there is uh, showing love. Uh, that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He's the express image of the Father, Father. and the Father he is, is love. love. The lo Father doesn't have love. He is love. A and Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil with love. A and that's Woo! what we've got to do, destroy the works of the devil. And I, there are two profound assignments that you have from the scriptures, <clears throat> and one is to show the devil that his end is destruction, and that's Philippians, I believe it's 120 verse 28, and so you're supposed to show the devil something. You're supposed to show that his end will be destruction, and the way you do that is by loving people. By loving unlovely people. Amen. Another thing that you're supposed to do is assignment because Paul did this and Paul did uh, also in, in Ephesians chapter three. And that was to show the wisdom 
of God to the powers and principalities in heavenly places. Now, you, you may think, well, I, I'm okay. I'm just here. I, I'm living on this earth and doing things, but you've got assignments from the word of God to destroy the works of the devil, to show the devil that his end is destruction, Hallelujah. to show the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, the evil forces and forces of wickedness. You've got an assignment to show them that their end is destruction. And God was whiz, was all wisdom, is all had all wisdom when he did what he did. See, the, the fallen angels, the devil and the fallen angel, they wanted to be exalted to the throne of God and to uh, take over uh, heaven, and they wanted to revolt against God. But then he came up, and he, he put his power in, in earthen vessels like you and me. Hallelujah. And, and that was wisdom. And see, they didn't think that was wise, and so they wanted to boot him out. He is an old old guy and they wanted to get rid of him and they wanted to bring a new a, a new force in into place but it's your assignment to show the principalities and powers of wickedness that are in high places that God's wisdom was right it was the thing to do because he's going to be operating through your life hallelujah through your life and, and and because he's poor he is love he is pouring his love through you, and that's going to show the wicked rulers and powers in heavenly places that it was God's wisdom that was right, and their wisdom was false. Oh, and yeah. that's an assignment you have. And you might think, well, I could just, I just stay down here, keep my head down, just keep going on the earth and, and keep doing my, well, what I want to do. But God has assignments for you oh, yeah. to. Uh, destroy the works of the devil, devil to mean. show the devil that he is not victorious and that his end is destruction and show oh, all yeah. of the uh, powers and rulers and uh, wickedness in heavenly places that their end is destruction and God's wisdom was the truth after all it's your assignment oh, to do yeah. that it's not it's not somebody else's assignment we all have it if Jesus said, if you believe in me, mm -hmm. you will do what I did. And he came to destroy the works yeah. of the devil. It's not just to live in his little circle of love, but he paid it all. He paid the ultimate price. And that's what he wants us to do. Take up your cross and follow me, he said. And, and Paul said, uh, I follow Christ and you follow me as I follow Christ. And Paul showed the devil that his end was destruction. We need to break down those walls that have held our little circle of love here and, and continue to expand those. That's what we're here on this earth to do is to, is to bring forth love because that is God. Mm -hmm. And if we live in God, we will not be fearful and we will express his very being mm -hmm. which is love mm -hmm. we will express it and release it into the world and perfect our love and and destroy the little walls of, the, of our mm -hmm. circle and, and and expand the limits it's time oh, for yeah. you to expand your territory this is the new oh, season yeah, this is we're new in a season. new season expand your territory take over new property new territory mm. it's a time of rejoicing a time of great cheer hallelujah hallelujah Jerry. that's wonderful that's wonderful well i have a scripture rising up in me and that's in in colossians uh about where he spoiled principalities in uh, chapter two of colossians it says um and in buried with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God through the operation of love hallelujah who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and in uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all of your trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against you 
uh, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah. You know, this is what people uh, recognize as Holy Week. And so, you know, what, what did Jesus do those last few days before he went to the cross? And it says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What made him do that? The love that he had for you and I and for all of mankind. Hallelujah. How did he triumph over death? How did he triumph over the, the torment and the suffering and the, the, how did he endure all of that? It says for the joy set before him, he did, he endured. But it says that he let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of holy days or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. And uh, it says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the, but the body is of Christ. Hallelujah. And so I just wanted to, to show you that he overcame all those things with the love of God. 